Okay, so let's look at a little more detail of the three cells in each hemisphere created by our three cell model, beginning with the Hadley cell. So both the single cell and the three cell model had this in common, where intense heating at the Earth's equator basically makes the, um, makes the air ascend or rise, and it can only go so far. It goes as far as the tropopause, and it tops out. The tropopause acts like a lid, and then the air travels north in the northern hemisphere and south in the southern hemisphere, so it basically travels towards the poles. And then the Hadley cell is complete about approximately 30 degrees or so in both hemispheres, so um, ending the Hadley cell. And this air that is descending about 30 degrees latitude, it as it descends, one of the things we know is that descending air will uh, contract, and because of its contraction, work is done on it, and that contracting air will warm. And so approximately about 30 degrees or so, but underneath this had the, the the top of the Hadley cell in the norm, northern hemisphere or the bottom of the Hadley cell in the southern hemisphere, that's where we're going to find some of our deserts. Just in that region where the Hadley cell um, ends in the northern and the southern hemisphere, those kind of odd sort of winds associated with that descending air, kind of creepy winds, I think, um, are what we call the horse latitudes. And historically, I guess this is real, they were called the horse latitudes because sailors that were stuck in that part of uh, uh, the global circulation where um, there was, sometimes there was little, little wind. They kind of got caught um, without wind to, uh, to power their ships. And so it's called horse latitudes because in order to get to where they needed to get to, sometimes they had to throw overboard their horses. I guess that's true. Um, so that descending air at the end of the Hadley cells in the northern and the southern hemisphere, then it's going to travel along the surface of the earth, both north and south. And if you kind of picture the Hadley cell in the northern hemisphere, um, it's going that, that, that uh, air that's traveling from about 30 degrees north towards the equator, it's going to be deflected to the right. And this actually is why we have an easterly, we have easterly trade winds underneath at the surface as associated with those Hadley cells in both the hemispheres. Um, in the northern hemisphere, we end up with what we call a northeasterly trade wind, and in the southern hemisphere, we have a southeasterly trade wind. Again, those would be surface winds. Um, both the northeasterly trade winds and the southeasterly trade winds, they converge or meet up where both of the Hadley cells began in the first place, which is around the equator. Here in a minute, we're actually going to say where they meet up is something else called the intertropical convergent zone. You're going to see this here in a minute. The intertropical convergent zone. Okay, that's where both Hadley cells meet up, and that's where we have uh, the ascending air going up to the tropopause and going both directions to create our two Hadley cells. Um, so uh, there at the intertropical convergence zone, or around the equator, it's plus or minus. We're going to see some sort of wandering of this intertropical convergence zone. So when I say the equator, there's a, bit, a little bit of play in that. But actually, the air is light where those, those uh, two uh, easterly trades come together, and we call that the doldrums. If somebody says, I'm in the doldrums, I guess they're not, they don't have the energy of the trade winds. <laughs> Um, all right, and I think I told you that I, uh, I really like going ahead and naming that cell then between the Hadley cell we just talked about and the polar cell. I think a good name for that is the feral cell. So the feral cell then is made up of shares descending air from the Hadley cell. And so the feral cell picks up where that descending air from the Hadley cell is going to travel in the northern hemisphere towards the North Pole. Now, think of it traveling from uh, the direction of the equator towards the pole. 
in the Northern Hemisphere and give it a right, uh, kind of take your hand and go right, and you can see that this is why we end up with um, the Coriolis force deflects it and creates a westerly wind here, part of the feral cell. So wind in the northern hemisphere, and, I, and see where it says underlined? Uh, this, if you print it out slides, that says an H instead of an N. Um, so wind is deflected, remember, to the right in the northern hemisphere because of the Coriolis force, and to the south in the southern hemisphere. And you can convince yourself um, to the, I said to the south and southern hemisphere. Wind is deflected towards the left in the southern hemisphere. You can convince yourself if you like, but the feral cell in both hemispheres will create this, um, this surface westerly wind that we call mid-latitude westerlies. Um, so now the feral cell ends about 60 degrees latitude in both hemispheres. It ends by, again, ascending and it ascends at, actually it clashes with the third cell, we call the polar cell, and where they clash actually we call the polar front here in just a little bit. So those, uh, we have two feral cells um, on, uh, beyond the Hadley cell in either hemisphere, polar cell, excuse me, Hadley cell and a feral cell in the northern hemisphere and Hadley cell and a polar cell in the southern hemisphere. Um, I might be, let me go ahead and kind of clear that up. Let's see, this is the equator roundabouts. We have three cells and three cells. I'm going to put an H for Hadley, H for, oops, H for Hadley, an F for Feral, F for Feral, and a P for Polar, P for Polar. There you go. <laughs> three cells and three cells in the northern and southern hemisphere. So if we look about 30 degrees, excuse me, about 60 degrees, um, then towards the poles, we end up with something called the polar cell. And we can kind of think of the polar cell as beginning at the um, about 90 degrees uh, where air is descending. And this descending air then is going to be deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere. And so actually at the Earth's surface, this is why we have another easterly wind. We call this the polar easterly wind. Okay, then that air will go ahead and ascend about 60 degrees, and I guess that's it. Let me kind of just go ahead and now let's take one more look at our three cell model, the same figure we looked at before. So we have Hadley cells, and again these go from about zero, actually this is going to be our intertropical ITZZ, intertropical convergence zone. But um, air ascends and makes two Hadley cells, beginning of two Hadley cells. And then about 30 degrees, it descends. And you can see that surface winds, we have our trade winds then, is part of our surface winds under the Hadley cell. They're easterly trade winds, northeasterly trade winds in the northern hemisphere, southeasterly trade winds in the southern hemisphere. Then about 30 degrees in both hemispheres, the Hadley cell descends, and as the air descends, it warms. So here's where we can kind of have some warming conditions, unusually warm conditions, just because of that descending air. This is where at the, um, at the tip of the Hadley cell is where we have our horse latitudes, where they threw horses overboard. Okay, uh, the, then we go to the feral cell. Okay, so we have a feral cell in both hemispheres. And the feral cell at the Earth's surface is where we find our westerlies. And I think you might have a homework question that says the United States is under the influence of what uh, prevailing wind? And the answer is westerlies or mid-latitude westerlies. Then about 60 degrees, the feral cell ends and the polar cells pick up. Um, so at the polar cells, again, we can kind of think of right where Santa Claus up is up here at the North Pole, think of that uh, cold air being dense and basically falling in all directions or uh, going, moving towards the, um, the equator in all directions at the Earth's surface anyway. And so um, it's deflected to the right, and that makes us our surface easterly wind we call the polar easterlies.